Over 200 of these unique creations fill this sculpture park on the Bronchospreit Dam. They are the constantly evolving product of an imagination that began sculpting 42 years ago and never stopped. When Anton discovered a book about Michelangelo, little did he know that his journey would lead to this. He's exhibited in Rome, New York, Hong Kong and naturally Bronchospreit. Hi Anton. Hello. Laura. How are you? How are you? Very good, thank you. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> your work is absolutely amazing. I think the first thing that comes to mind is what goes on in your head to create such artistic work? Well, mostly what goes on in my head is the next sculpture that I'm going to make. And uh, one often gets ideas that lead into other ideas. For instance, the piece that I'm working on at the moment led to these ones over here, which is Grace Raining from Heaven. Since the Boxberg raised Anton entered his first competition aged 16 and won first prize, he's created more than 12,000 sculptures. Art was a revelation to him. Discovering the book on Michelangelo literally changed your life. I actually didn't know anything about art when I was a child um, growing up in a policeman's house. When I saw the Michelangelo book, I thought, wow, an angel came from heaven to make sculptures. Because I saw these beautiful white things, I didn't know what marble was even. And then I realized that this guy was a man. Man, was I blown out of the water by that. So I thought to myself, if a man could do this, I can also do it. He raised his sons in a household full of art and debate, which his youngest, Lionel, responded to by becoming a successful artist himself, selling at Christie's and to major art collections. I believe your sons also followed in the same footsteps. I encouraged him by not giving him any pocket money. <laughs> I gave him a pen and paper instead, said, draw something and sell it, then you'll have money. And he did. Well, you're a good dad, teaching him entrepreneurship at such a young age. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Between father and son, their work has featured on the front page of the New York Times, the cover of a Christie's catalog, and today, about 30% of what Anton sculpts here is sold overseas. Anton, your work is showcased all over the world, but why did you choose this space as your location? Well, this was a hidden gem that I managed to find and buy. And uh, like my son says, the bigger the space, the bigger the art. I believe the work in this park is influenced by a really strong force in your life. When my mother passed away, actually, there was no memorial for her. So I decided to make a memorial called Johanna Katerina. Wow. And I made a series of them called Earth, Wind and Fire. And this particular sculpture was called Wind. Anton, it seems like there's a fascination with heads. Actually, I had a dream of this park full of heads many years ago. And the dream reoccurred and then I decided, well, I better do something about it. And I saw these flat heads in the dream and I made a series of heads in a way inspired by the heads on Easter Island and I even called my largest head the Passover, which is Easter. Am I correct in saying that the heads reflect your profile? <laughs> yes, I guess everything an artist does is autobiographical and I don't do it deliberately or consciously, it just happens. Much of the casting method he uses here dates back to ancient Greece, so Lorna was getting two and a half thousand years of technique in a day. This is a special wax that they made for me and this is an older sculpture that I've decided to change. So we're going to stick this hot sticky wax onto the face and remodel her. How does the process work? Well actually you start with a, with a metal armature over which you put clay and then you sculpt the original one which is this white one. Then we make a mold and then from the mold we do bronze casting. The process is so detailed he usually produces only two pieces a month so it helps that his work sells in dollars, euros and pounds and definitely qualifies as a precious metal export. Anton, you're self-taught. How did you go about honing your skill? I spent a lot of time in art libraries at the University of Pretoria 
Victoria. And I read all the available books that there were and spent time with other artists. And uh, they taught me how to make molds and how to work with clay, the various materials and things. And I honed my skills in that way by, by actually literally teaching myself to do this. So, Anton, how did I do? You did brilliantly. You can come and work here if you like. Well, if your first painting was sold for 50 Rand, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder how much you'd pay me for starting off. A little more than that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anton. It's, it's been an so much fun. It's an absolute pleasure. Hey.